Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing how to make these cute hand embroidered knit sweaters. Stay tuned. For this project, you are going to need a knit sweater. You're going to also need a name, which I'll show you how I created this in just a minute. This sweater isn't anything fancy. I got this off Amazon and I'm going to put a link in the description box below. You're also going to need a water soluble pen. This is a Mark Be Gone. I definitely would not skip this part. It's very important. For those of you that have cute handwriting, skip the next step with the printed out name. Take your marking pen and just draw directly on your sweater. You can even skip the stabilizer. Um, I'm just walking you through the steps. For those of you that don't have cute handwriting like me, so I'm gonna show you how to make this name in just a second. Let's talk about the other things that we're gonna need. Next is a sticky and water soluble stabilizer. This is pretty important too. This brand is great. This is from Sulky. It comes in these eight and a half by 11 sheets. Um, one side sticks onto it. Then when you're done, you can cut away the excess and wash it away. You'll also need some yarn of your choice. This is Big Twist Gentle. I think it's um, a five gauge. I really liked this weight. You can go down to a four, you can go up to a six. Um, it's just kind of a personal preference. I was in Joann's and found this. You'll also need some yarn darners. These are by Dritz and I'm using this one. You just wanna make sure that the eye is big enough so that you can fit your yarn through, but any type of needle will work really. You'll also need something to trace onto. An open window works just fine, but I get a lot of questions about this. This is a Crayola tracing pad that was my daughter's and is now mine, um, but it just lights up. It makes it really easy to trace things over. Like I said, an open window works fine. Um, next, I'm gonna hop over to my Canva app and show you how to make the name and then I will meet you back here. We're going to open up a Canva app and we're going to um, search for an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. We're going to click this flyer one. Then we're going to create a blank flyer. From here, we're going to add text and then add a text box and type in our name. I'm going to enlarge it a little so you can see what I'm doing, but next we're going to change the font. I'm going to search for harmony and select it. From here, I'm going to rotate my name and enlarge it so that it fits the entire 8.5 by 11 frame. So this is what it's going to look like when you print it out. Um, imagine this is just a standard piece of paper. That's what your name's going to look like. So from here, I'm going to download and then print this image. We're back at my sewing table now. I have my printed name. I've got my stabilizer piece, and we're going to trace the name onto the stabilizer using our water-soluble pen. Make sure that you're tracing onto the fabric side of the stabilizer. I'm gonna speed through this and I'll meet you back here. Next, I'm gonna cut away just a little bit of the stabilizer so we don't have quite so much, but you still wanna leave a pretty good amount on all of the sides. It's time to embroider. We're gonna take our sweater and make sure it's nice and flat. We're gonna peel the paper backing off of our stabilizer and center it in the middle. Take your time here because it's not really great if you have to take this up. You kind of need to just press it down once. So make sure it's centered and then take your time pressing down really good around the whole piece of stabilizer. Next it's time to thread our needle. So first we're gonna get a pretty long piece of yarn. I measured and I'm getting about a 45 to 50 inch piece of yarn. You don't want it too short that you're gonna have to tie off constantly, but you also don't want it, want it too long to where it's too hard to manage. So you're going to take your needle and the hardest part is getting the yarn through the eye of the needle. I like to twist it really, really tight in my fingers and then cut the end at an angle. And then from here, once I kind of push it through, I'll grab a few strands and then the rest kind of follows through and I'll just pull it all the way. I'm leaving about a six inch tail and this is what you're going to hold on to as your embroider. On the other end, after you've clipped it from the skein of yarn, you're going to triple knot this part. We are ready to get started. I've got my needle. I'm holding the tail in my hand. I'm gonna work my way from the inside out. So I'm gonna bring my needle up at the very beginning of the S, right at the tip here. In just a minute, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit more, but I'm going to poke through and pull all the way through until I get to the knot. Keep in mind, if you're using the stabilizer, you're gonna feel a little bit of a resistance because it's sticky. 
On another note, if you have cute handwriting, you can completely skip the Canva and the stabilizer and this whole process. You can just write directly onto your sweater and go on to the chain stitch. Next, we're gonna hold our yarn out of the way and stick our needle back through the hole that we've already created. And remember, I'm keeping, I'm kind of holding this yarn to the left here to keep my knot secure on the back so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna pull my yarn through so it creates a loop. Next, I'm gonna move down about half an inch down my blue drawn line and put my needle back up. And I'm gonna measure just to make sure. I consistently use about half an inch between each um, chain stitch. If you need to, you can pre-mark dots just until you learn how to eyeball it. I get a lot of questions about how my stitches are so consistent and it just takes practice. So after you've moved down about half an inch, pull your needle through until you create your first stitch here. Next, I'm gonna take the back of my needle and work my chain stitch around just to make it a little bit tighter and a little bit neater. You'll see me do this pretty often. I'm just trying to make all of my stitches consistent and look nice. So to do that, I'm just kind of either separating it or tugging it a little or just getting it to where I want it. So next I'm going to do the same thing that we did for the first one. I'm gonna take my needle and put it back down inside my loop through the hole that we just came up. And this is gonna create the second loop for your next chain stitch. Just like we did before, I'm gonna move my needle about half an inch down and poke back through to the front, making sure that I'm going inside of the loop that we just created. After each stitch, I'm really taking my time to make sure that it looks how I want it to. It's difficult to go backwards after you've moved four or five stitches ahead and fix that number two stitch. So definitely take your time here. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit and then zoom in so you can kind of get a better idea of how I'm doing the chain stitch a little bit closer up. So I've made it to the end of my S. You can see I've done the entire loop around. Now I'm going to show you how to tie off and it kind of works out. I'm almost out of thread anyways. So from here, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down just outside of the last loop that I created. Now that our stitch is anchored in, we're gonna work from the back to tie off. So I'm gonna flip over my work and you can kind of see what I've got going on here. I'm never a huge stickler for the back of embroidery, especially these because you don't see it. But I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna weave it back through the previous maybe two or three stitches to lock this tail into place. And once I've done that, I'm gonna cut my needle off of my yarn, leaving about a six inch tail or so. I'm gonna split this into two and then double knot it. So from here, the, this is secure, this is how I tie off. If I'm not feeling super confident about it, I'll run my needle back through the back a couple more times. But this is what works for me. I'm gonna double knot it nice and secure. Then I can take my needle and pull it through from underneath the stitches just to kind of give it a little bit extra security. And now I'm gonna cut this and move on. This is what we have so far. Next, I'm gonna get another piece of yarn and thread it through the needle just like I did before. I'm gonna start my chain stitch here, work down around the A, and then jump up to this point up here and work down around through the, through the R and then stop right before the A, and then jump again to complete the A. So I'm gonna start just like I did before. I'm gonna take my needle through the back and start there. I'm going to put a link in the description box below to the hand embroidered swaddle tutorial that I did. It's much easier to see the chain stitch in action. I'm not moving my hand around so much. So I'm definitely going to link that below. And if you still need help with the chain stitch, go to that video and I can 
link it. It's going to be much easier for you to kind of figure out what's going on. This is a tough video to see. I'm moving around a lot and I can't speed it up or else you really can't see. I'm going to continue on around this A and meet you at the bottom to show you how I jump to one point to the other. I'm back. Don't you wish all embroidery was this fast? Um, from here, I'm going to do just like I did at the end of the S. I'm going to anchor this stitch down by taking my needle and putting it right past this last stitch that I created. I'm going to pull all the way through and instead of tying off, I am going to take my needle and put it back at the top of the A. So you'll see me come back through up here and then I'm going to continue on chain stitching. Since this is such a short distance from the bottom of the A to the top of the A, I'm not really worried about tying off or seeing this little jump right here on the back. It's not, it's not gonna bother me. I'm just gonna keep on doing. Don't pull too tight or you can see the result here. You definitely wanna make sure that your work kinda stays flat and it's gonna take a couple of stitches down the A right here to establish that and make sure that that um, yarn on the back is gonna stay put. So kind of take your time for these first couple stitches and make sure that the back stays just like you want it to. I'm going to hold this yarn in place with one hand and kind of use the other hand to make the first loop and then kind of take my time moving down. Remember now is the time if you want to adjust any of your stitches. You'll see me take the back of my needle a lot and move the stitches around and tighten them a little to get them to look how I want them to and then I'll move on to the next one. From here I'm going to work down the A, around the R, stop at the, the bottom of the A and then do another jump to the top of the A. So I'm just going to keep working and I will meet you back at the end when we're done. I finished the embroidery, I've got to the end of the A tied it off and I'm happy with you know what it looks like at this point next we are going to very very carefully start to cut away some of the excess stabilizer um, I do this by starting to gently tug around the edges and then I'll take my detail scissors and cut around the name you don't have to get it perfectly and if it ends up being too much trouble or you think you're going to cut into your sweater just leave it don't try to get in between the letters. This is just kind of taking some of the work later of washing it off. So just do your best here. Last step in our project is to wash away the stabilizer. We're going to do that by running warm water and holding our work underneath. And then we're going to use our fingers and agitate it and kind of wiggle it around and get all the stabilizer off. You shouldn't feel any left. After you're finished, you can either throw it in the dryer or let it air dry. If you see any residue at that point, just repeat this step and then you should see something like this. Our work is complete. I hope that you think it looks beautiful. I hope this video serves as a starting point and you can kind of find your own way and figure out what you think looks the best. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. Bye y'all.